Okay? Alright, so here we go. Number one says solve using substitution. Okay, now this is exactly what your test is going to look like. So you need to make sure that you are following the directions. What does substitution mean I do? Get something by itself, right? And it would be easiest to get this by itself. So I'm going to write x equals 7 minus 2y. Then I'm going to take the 7 minus 2y and plug it in right here, right? That's my x. Well, you, they were handed out. If you weren't here, that's on you. So I'll go back and see if there's any answers back there. Right? Yeah. Make sure you're getting the right chapter. And 2 times 7 minus 2y minus y equals 4. So I'm going to put this in the 14 minus 4y minus y equals 4. So I'm going to do my distributive property after I substitute it in. Combining like terms. And now I'm going to solve the equation. So negative 14. So it looks like y equals 2. Is anybody working ahead and got y equals 2? But I'm not done because my answer has to be this, right? An ordered pair. And I have figured out that the y is 2. And now I'm going to, what, plug it in, and x equals, <coughs> what does x equal if I plug in 2 for y? So 3 comma 2. All right, that is substitution. If you can't, if you don't have yours, if you've lost it, never got one, whatever, pull it up on Schoology, or you can just write it down as we go. And I would suggest that you print it for the next class. This one says elimination. How do I do this? multiply by something to make the something cancel out. So I might multiply this bottom row by 3 because that will turn that into a negative 3y. So 2x plus 3y equals 4. 9x minus 3y equals negative 15. Make sure that when you're multiplying through by whatever you decide to multiply by, that you're multiplying everything whole equation. Y's are gone. 11x equals negative 11 and x equals negative 1. Just like before, in fact, every problem on this page, you're going to be finding an x and a y. So now I know my x is negative 1. So I'm going to go back somewhere and plug it in. It does not make any difference where. I'm just going to put it in the top one. So if I put in negative 1, I have negative 2 plus 3y equals 4. Adding 2, I have 3y equals 6, and it looks like y equals 2. And then we have one more. It looks exactly the same. But this time we are using Kramer's rule. So here we go, using Kramer's rule. What's the first thing I do with Kramer's rule? I evaluate. Folks, folks, folks. I evaluate the determinant of the coefficients. That's exactly right. The determinant of the coefficient. So I'm going to build a little determinant and evaluate. 
evaluate it. So I'll evaluate that. Remember how we do that. Two times two. Three times negative four. And what do I do with those numbers then? Subtract. Subtract. So that gives me 16. Four minus negative 12. And then what do I do with the 16? Why not? That is the denominator. over 16. So now I find the numerators. And I find that by taking the 1 and negative 2. So these two equations, I didn't write down the equations, but they equal 1 and negative 2. So I cut that out and glue it in on top. If I'm doing x, the 1 and negative 2 goes right here on top of x. If I'm doing y, the 1 and negative 2 goes in on top of y. And then I evaluate these, just like I did that one. So that I have a 2 and an 8. I subtract them and get negative 6. I have a negative 4 and a 3. I subtract them and get negative 7. Now, one more step. If anything reduces, you need to do it. So what about this right here? Negative 6 sixteenths is negative 3 eighths. And 7 sixteenths stays the same. So we're at page 1. Yeah. Now, what's page 2? Well, page 2 looks like it's a whole page of... Um, matrix stuff. Matrix operations. So what am I going to do here? Well, what's the first one to say? QA. How do I find QA? Take everything in A, which is a big matrix here, but it doesn't matter. No matter what the matrix is, I can times it by 2. So my answer is going to be 2, 4, 6. Negative 2, 2, 0. And 0, 6, 2. How does that look to everybody? Times in by 2. That is a gimme question, right? We are not going to miss that guy. Now, what about B minus C? Can I even do that problem? Remember, sometimes we have problems that we can't do. Is that a doable problem? Yes, because these guys have the same dimensions. This is a 2 by 2, that's a 2 by 2. So I can subtract. And when I subtract, I just do entry minus entry. So 1 minus negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1. 2 minus 0. And 3 minus 2. plus B. Can't do it because these were subtractable because they're the same size. That's the rule for add and subtract. A and B are not the same size, so they can't be added. 
So you put an empty set symbol, you write can't do, you write no answer, some indication that this is an impossible problem. DA, multiply. So D times A. Can this be done? I hope so, since I wrote it all out. Can this be done? Well, what are the dimensions of this guy? Two by three. What are the dimensions of this guy? Three by three. Look here. Can it be done? Yes. And the answer will be a two by three. So I'm going to set that up. Two by three. This is going to be my answer. There we go. And then I'm going to start filling in the blanks. Now remember, you fill in the blanks. You look at which blank you want. So this is in the first row, first column. And you multiply the first row times the first column. And we took a quiz over this. Some of you missed it. Go back and look at that quiz. I returned everything. Make sure you know how to multiply. So write down the numbers in the row. And then pair them up with the numbers in the column. These have to match in order to multiply, mm -hmm. and the answer is these. Now, do the math, add it up, whatever, so what do I get there? It looks like negative three. And then I move over and do the same thing in the next spot, right? So if I'm going, going here, I'm still in row one, but now I am column two. So I still have negative 214, but now I'm pairing it with 213. Oh, what is that? at nine. All right, so go ahead and fill in the rest. You guys need to engage here. You have to be able to do this all on your own. We have a couple more days of practice, but you need to, you need to know how to do this. So start multiplying. You're going to fill in the rest of the blanks. right or not. So as you start getting answers, look up here and see if you match me or if I match you. Anybody have a concern about one of my numbers? Question E. 
what is happening? What do we ask for in question E? Inverse. Yep. And remember, the inverse is a two-step process. What do I do first? I'm going to find the inverse here. There are two things I need to do. What do I need to do? I need to find a new matrix. And I need to find the determinant. So I need a determinant first. What is my determinant? Three, negative two. But remember, you subtract. Guys, this minus this, right? I subtract. So that's going to be five. Hang on to that. We're going to use that number in a minute. But first, I have to build my new matrix. And how do I build my new matrix? Flip those. Those two, so three and one. And then negative two. Negative two, positive one. And my answer, the thing you're going to put in the answer blank, is that with every number divided by five. Right? the dimensions of A are 3 by 3 and the dimensions of C are 2 by 2 and these two do not match. So that is another cannot do. When we took the quiz over this, did we have problems that were no answer? On your test, there will be problems that are no answer. Alright, so, so far, what's our test look like? We have a page of solving systems, substitution elimination Kramer's rule, and then we have a page of all this matrix stuff. Now what do we have? Well, we have a bigger determinant. What's our strategy for this one? Yeah, when you did a little one, you just did this minus this. Well, when it's bigger, let's try to copy it right. When it's bigger, we have the same basic idea but more of it, more steps. So I've recopied my first two columns, and now what am I going to do? Multiply. So what's that giving me? I'm multiplying now. We're Negative multiplying. 15. Negative 15. Multiply. Negative 4. Multiply. Zero. And add them all up. So it looks like negative 19. Then turn around and do the same thing the other way. So what's all that times together? Positive 6. And all of this multiplied is positive 10. And all that is 0. two numbers. Right. Same thing I did with these. Subtract. So it's negative 19 minus 16, which is negative 35. Okay, then I have a page of like, I guess, definition type stuff. Or not page, but section. What are the dimensions of the matrix in A? 2 by 4. 2 rows, 4 columns. What is A sub 2, 1? 5. That means in matrix A, second row, first column. That is 5. In the expression 2A, where A is a matrix, 2 is called a vocab word. I mean, it acts like a coefficient, but in matrix land, it's called a scalar. Got to know your vocab, guys. It's a scalar. Will there be a uh, question on the quiz where it's like the A uh, row to like column one, or column two, whatever, with another, like, multiply with another one, and then you find it for that? I mean, like, A times B, and then you have to find A 
and Jack, what does the test look like? Okay. What is a square matrix? Same number of rows as columns. Same number of rows as columns. That makes it mean you square. Divine matrix. Dig your notes out. I told you when we did this that you were going to have to know this definition. Dig them out. If you find it, read it aloud. flying the coop, so she had to take her test today. Ava, is that question on the test? Yeah. Yeah. Over or what? Oh, take your notes. Uh, you didn't write it down. <laughs> Get it from somebody over else. Oh, over it. I already wrote it down. All right, define entry or element. What do we mean by an entry or an element? What is an entry or an element, guys? Titus, the numbers inside the matrix, that's right. So when we say find A sub 2, 1, that's an entry. It's the number inside the matrix. Okay, now we have our big problem. Just like I promised, it's a whole page, and like I promised, I got everything all set up for you. You just got to start filling stuff in. So, we've got hamburgers, hot dogs, total. Uh-oh, this one has a fixed interval. We talked about these yesterday. And cross. Okay. All right, so here we go. We need all our I got the constraints written over here to the side. They're the blanks with the constraints. All right, so here we go. A snack bar cooks that okay. To stay in business, it must sell at least 10 hamburgers, but it can't cook more than 40. What does that mean? Hamburgers have to be between 10 and 40. So if I let hamburgers be X, X has to be between 10 and 40. And that automatically is one of my constraints, right? It's something you're going to graph. Any fixed interval is getting graphed. All right, it must also sell at least 30 hot dogs, but it can't make more than 70. So isn't that another fixed interval? Hot dogs have to be between 30 and 70. It cannot cook more than 90 sandwiches altogether. Where's that go? Total number is 90. Profit on a hamburger is 33 cents and a hot dog is 21 cents. Okay. So are there any more constraints that I don't have in my thing? I have my two fixed intervals. Are there any others? What's that top row say? X plus Y, X plus y has to be less than or equal to 90. You don't need, because you already know X and Y are bigger than zero, you don't need to include that, but if you want to include that, you can. You may not need every blank that I put in there, and that's okay. What am I maximizing? I'm maximizing my profit, and how do I calculate it? Why? Why? X plus Y less than 90 is a constraint. 
it isn't that I need to live in profit. Well, I guess it sort of does, but it's not my profit. All right, let's graph it and see what it looks like. How do I graph um, my fixed intervals? How do I do that? Shaded in between. So right now we have this right here. Would you agree with that? This rectangle right here. In between red, in between green. All right. Now I'm going to throw this guy in the mix. And he's got an x and a y. So if x is zero, y is ninety. And if y is zero, yesterday, doesn't it? Isn't that kind of what happened yesterday? And where is the pink shaded? Underneath? So we're inside the box, but underneath the pink. So you should have something like this shaded in. Now what do we do? Come on, you have to know what to do next. We want to write down all the points, okay? So some of them I know, for example, oh shoot, I don't know any of these. Okay, I'm going to have to figure them all out. This is an easy one. What's this one? 10 for, okay, so that one's easy. And I think this one's also easy. That one's 40 30. This one right here is easy. I feel like my pointing is easy because he is 10 70. Okay, so now the super easies are done, but they're still kind of easy. Let's look at this one. What do we know? about that point right there. He's on the green line. Well, he's something 70, right? But since he's on the pink, on the pink, they have to add up to 90. So that is 2070. And then what about this one? Last one, what about him? What do I know about this one right here? He's on the 40, and since he's also on the pink, and the pink has to add up to 90, he's 40, 50. Now, at this point, at this point, you can take each, 
This is X, Y, and plug it in right here with your calculator. Plug it in right here and find the profit for each one. You can also, if you choose, read some of these out. Look at these two guys. In both points, we're making 30 hot dogs, right? Here we're making 10 hamburgers, here we're making 40. Where are we going to make the most money? 40. Making 40. So that one cannot possibly be the highest. Same thing here. I got 70 and 70 and 10 and 20. Isn't this one going to be higher? Now, these guys, 40 and 30 and 40 and 50, down. So really, we're boiled down to here. Again, I am not trying to confuse you. Some of you picked up on this and you got it already. You can take every single point and plug it in right here. If that's easiest for you. We want the biggest one. So I'm doing 20 times 33 cents plus 21 cents times 70. 2130 is how much I got this guy making for that point. And 2370 for this one. Do those numbers look about right to you? It's an awful lot of work for not very much money, but what are you gonna tell this guy to do? He needs to make 40 hot or 40 hamburgers and 50 hot dogs, and he'll make $23.70. And that's going into my calculator. Would you agree with me? So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to R-R-E-F it. And something else is going to come out. Hopefully that looks like this. Alright, so here we go. is this guy that I'm putting in. He has four rows and five columns. 
one, so he's a four by five. That's too good to be true. That must be right. Does someone else match that? Yeah. And then we write down our, I don't know, I guess in this case, ordered quadruple. It's not an ordered pair. We said four. And this is how you get full credit for the problem. was rigged. It isn't that hard to rig them. I mean, it's my job, so okay. But I don't always rig them, and I don't have to always rig them so that the answers come out cheap like this, right? On the quiz you took, I didn't rig them. And they, the answers came out a mess, didn't they? How do we fix that? So when you get your matrix on here, if you don't have, here, they're perfect, they're beautiful, but if you've got wacko decimals, you're going to hit your math button. First option is frac. Press enter a couple times, and it'll come up with the fractions. All right? Everybody's going to do that. Wow, we just took the whole test. We had prayer pledge and all that stuff, and we're done. The whole test is done. Okay? So, because I don't know that really going to happen in any second, of all the problems that we've done, that we just did the test problems, which one do we need a bit more practice on? Subcultural. So, 5x plus 2y equals 7, 3x minus y equals 2. I'm going to do substitution. Who else? 
a question. Maybe on one of the papers I turned back. Homework, quiz, something. All right, now I'm gonna get somebody to come to the board and do a problem. Who am I going to pick? I'm going to pick Daryl because he's brave enough to sing and dance in front of the crowd. He can come up here and do this problem. Daryl, you may bring a friend. A partner. You're going to evaluate this determinant. So you can do it by yourself or you can pick somebody to come with you. Whatever works for you. You guys come together? Now, what are the rest of you doing? You're sitting there being grateful you're not Daryl, right? And you're doing it at your seats. Alright, we're doing it at our seats. This is definitely a test question. Again, in a few moments we will be 